I was asked a couple times since the ban list has dropped to make like a tier list for the new format or like a hand trap tier list, a board breaker tier list, because a lot of people are excited to play board breakers. Now with Baron gone, you know, and Savage gone, your board breakers, they don't keep getting negated. And the honest answer, I'm not quite sure how to rank these cards right now without even knowing exactly what the format is going to be. So instead, what we're going to do is kind of similar to what we did yesterday, where I ranked like certain winners of the ban list and certain losers of the ban list. We're going to do like somewhat of the same for some hand traps and some like board breaker style cards, where instead of ranking them as like, this is the best board breaker for sure going forward, I want to like just bring some cards up and share my thoughts about them on how they might be positioned in this upcoming format and in an included discussion with it right because instead of just saying like if baron can't negate in the bureau anymore it's obviously the best card ever i don't think it's as simple right and so i want to have a discussion about those kind of cards because for a lot of these cards it could go either way banning of baron the fleur in my opinion makes board breakers a very appealing strategy again cards like these right lightning storm evenly matched even raigeki to an extent or dark hole or whatever you want to call it right all these cards have suffered a lot from the fact that cards like Baron existed to the point where these cards are meant to equalize your position when you go second. It's, it's sort of like a catch-up mechanic where if you weren't able to stop your opponent from playing, this is one way you can like catch up to them, right? And whether they are catch up cards or equalizers or whatever whether they actually equalize the game that's another question for another day but these cards suffer a lot from the fact that most decks were able to put up like a bear in the floor so like you would have to use your battle phase to activate evenly matched your opponent would just negate it and you would lose your battle phase and wouldn't even deal with the board actually he evenly trades with the baron you lost your main phase you still have to deal with all the other stuff it's just not great lightning storm to an extent the same thing and so that card that you have dedicated a side deck slot two ends up just being negated right that card that you were hoping to do something didn't really do something it traded with the baron negate which is sometimes good enough but a lot of the times it wasn't and so this would as a result force you to basically draw multiples of these kind of cards and at that point it started getting relatively unlikely because there simply weren't that many cards like evenly or like lightning storm in the game so that you could consistently draw like a bunch of them that being said i don't know if this is going to be like the age of board breakers you know because there's certainly still going to be decks that are going to be good against board breakers and that is going to be something to be on the lookout for right certainly though i think what can be said is that cards like evenly and lightning storm are gonna be better right whenever you had a deck in the game that had like an auto lose to cards like evenly or lightning storm as a result these cards ended up seeing a decent amount of play and then people ended up not playing the decks that would lose to evenly matched or they would go for certain lines that played around evenly matched by like giving your opponent an ably or something making it unable to be destroyed or whatever this is what makes it so hard to predict it is so easy to just sit here and tell you guys yeah nibiru lightning storm and evenly basically lose their strongest counter in baron the fleur so they are all gonna be broken now which at first glance might seem true but to be honest, I don't know if that's going to be the case. From my perspective, as a competitive deck builder, if I'm going to go to a tournament now, I'm going to expect these cards and I wouldn't play a deck right now. I wouldn't advise you to play a deck that has no plan on how to deal with these cards. This is always the case with these sort of tech cards is that when that's the case, people are able to play around them or pick decks that aren't as weak to them and therefore the cards become less effective. However, I will say this is exactly what this ban list is meant to achieve, right? Because if you think about what I just said, not playing decks that lose to these cards is a good thing. What these three cards do is they heavily punish over committing to the board, overextending, doing a whole lot of stuff without a backup plan, putting all your eggs into one basket, however you want to call it. The strategies that lose to these cards typically are the ones that are more annoying to play against or more toxic or more over committing, whatever, right? And so the fact that these kind of strategies cannot simply rely on putting up a bear in the fleur to deal with all of these problems is a big W in my book. That being said, that doesn't mean that these cards are bad either. There is still going to be room to definitely play these cards. I think specifically Nibiru. Maybe Nibiru is not going to be that popular in the main deck. And so some people are going to play some combo decks. And then you have the Nibiru in the side deck to deal with those. 
I think that's what Nibiru was meant to be by design, right? All these cards are meant to be cards that counter certain strategies that overcommit onto the board on turn one. And I think they are all going to do a very good job at that. And removing Baron is a huge step in the direction to help these cards actually work. I personally don't even know if Nibiru specifically is going to end up being a really, really good main deck card, because from my standpoint, there's a couple of decks in the game right now that are gonna have a relatively easy time against Nibiru. If you think of Snake Eye decks that have the Temple, you think of Branded, which I'm pretty sure has a bunch of good lines through Nibiru. I think Nibiru has its counters in the format, and I think those decks are gonna be popular. So Nibiru might not even be that great of a main deck card, which is funny because Nibiru is a super, super heavily played card at the moment before this ban list. But my first instinct tells me that I think Nibiru usage might go down over time if people just expect it and play decks that aren't as weak to Nibiru. This could be wrong. You know, maybe Nibiru is still good enough because I have to be honest with you, Fire King Snake Eye, which is probably going to be the more popular Snake Eye version now, at least in the beginning, that deck, I'm not sure how well it plays under Nibiru because I have to admit, I haven't played that deck that much. But obviously in that deck, you want to go for Fire King Island, right? And so if you go for Fire King Island, how do you play around Nibiru using Divine Temple, right? Because those kind of clash. So I guess you need two card combos to play around Nibiru, unless you just want to go for the one card combo without any Fire King cards. Either way, there is ways probably you can still like summon Appalooza and all that kind of stuff. It's just that I'm not familiar with how exactly it works yet because I haven't played much Fire King and I haven't played against much Fire King recently because the Hand Trap Pure version was so much more popular. That being said, I think essentially as it has been in the last couple of years, literally, I don't think there is an exception to this. Almost every single tier one meta threat in the last couple of years had its ways to play around Nibiru. So Nibiru has phased in and out of play. It's always been a good card, but um, it's never completely taken over because what happens when Nibiru takes over the game is that people just respect Nibiru and then it starts becoming worse. And I don't think that dynamic is going to change, but I think the fact that Nibiru exists and Baron was probably by far the easiest way to counter it I think is a good thing moving forward but yeah all three of these cards are obviously winners of this ban list because they simply become more viable and less counterable that doesn't mean they cannot be countered or played around but they become less counterable another card that I think or two cards that I think are probably even bigger benefiting from this ban list than these three is these two I mean these cards have always been good since they've been released this is basically what board breaker approaches in this format are gonna look like I think cards like lightning storm and evenly you're gonna see in side decks a decent amount these cards are the are the real deal that have the main deck potential for this format simply because these cards have applications going first and second whereas lightning storm and evenly have applications pretty much exclusively going second i played board breaker snake eyes at a regional a couple weeks ago and that deck was super fun and it felt super strong as well the one thing i was genuinely worried about was um playing against pure snake eye with baron and savage i was playing against fire king snake eye at that regional and it did didn't even feel like a real game honestly going second with all those cards in my deck because that deck didn't make omni negates i just didn't have an issue against it at all i think that sort of stuff is going to be super super viable it remains to be seen how people are going to deal with this because it simply is super hard to deal with talents without baron the fleur obviously these cards don't solve every situation still something like branded with gimmick puppet nightmare could very well be a thing i think what this is specifically going to do though is it's gonna stop people from just changing their Baron lines into Appalooza lines. Because what you have to realize is that, yes, even though a lot of decks can probably still play around Nibiru by making an early Appalooza, early Appalooza boards without Baron de Fleur almost always get completely destroyed by both of these cards. If your combo deck cannot support Appalooza with an Omni Negate anymore, that Appalooza might just be taken away from you, and that's going to be it. And that's a good thing. I think Talents and Thrust are phenomenal cards after this ban list. Two cards that I think kind of are losing with this ban list, or three cards actually, they might still be played, but I think they will go down a little bit in usage. Dark Ruler is the first obvious one. Like the reason why Dark Ruler was good is because it dealt specifically with Omni Negates really, really well. With Omni Negates not being that popular anymore or not being accessible to every deck anymore, I think Dark Ruler 
is going to fall off a little bit. That being said, it could still very well be a good card against certain decks in the future. Like the card is still a very, very good card. It's just when I'm going second into a board that doesn't have Baron, why am I going to activate this card if I could just activate Talents, which is so much more flexible, good going first if they play hand traps, lets me either take or draw or look at their hand, right? Negating everything is less important when um, you can actually deal with their stuff. The same is true for these two cards. Droplet and Super Poly are both in pretty much the same spot. I have not been a fan of Super Poly for a long time. The package that Super Poly offers or like the deal that you get out of Super Poly, I've just never been the biggest fan of because it requires a discard. It requires extra deck space. And then is it really better than other things? And what made it better, in my opinion, all three of these cards have that in common is that they can't be reacted to that meant your opponent couldn't negate them this is now less relevant like one of the main selling points of these cards is now gone and then cards that take control of your opponent's stuff those cards are in an interesting spot now simply because they're really good against Appaloosa. Let me sleeve up this change of heart because you guys are going to be mad at me. These cards make ending on Apple hella fake. Yeah, that is the thing. And that is also why Apple is way more balanced than Baron. Apple was really good if it was paired specifically with Baron, right? Because Appaloosa becomes completely custom and broken if your opponent can't out it. Baron could negate that one out that they had. Also, Link Karibo being gone makes Apple worse specifically for Snake Eyes because it's easier to run over it. These cards are going to be more more efficient now simply because they don't get negated i was playing enemy in my in my snake eye deck i was using it to dodge imperms and veilers so i would like normal summon snake eye ash they would imperm it i would chain enemy to tribute it they would then negate the the enemy with baron it was still good for me i was baiting the baron negate and i was getting my ash through through the imperm but now it gets even better because now i even get to resolve the effect i even get to take the thing mind control also falls into this category that's true another card that i think is a huge winner of this ban list is fen it's not that Fenrir was super bad into Baron. It's just that Fenrir is um, specifically good in board breaker formats. One thing that's going to hold a lot of people back on playing Fenrir, like if you special that one extra time with Fenrir, maybe your combo that previously played around Nibiru now plays into Nibiru. I think that could be the case. But I think Fenrir is going to be a card that even if it's not going to go back to being an insane staple, I think it's going to rise in usage. And that's like my take on the position of board breakers in this format. Matt, honestly, what I'm expecting and what I'm hoping for is that we're going to go into a more healthy direction. The situation that we were in with hand traps right now, how do I phrase this? The reason why board breakers were so weak in the current format and the reason why everyone was playing 15 to 18 to 20 hand traps, whatever it was, it was way more reliable to stop your opponent from playing the game completely than to actually deal with what they were going to do if you let them play. Board breakers, by definition, let the opponent play the game which is a good thing <laughs> it's a good thing if that happens but it wasn't optimal in this format before the ban list because if you let pure snake eye play the game or even any other deck that was ending on baron and savage and all that kind of stuff like monadium or whatever right if you let those decks play the game you're simply not going to beat them. Your Snake Eye, literally two card combos into Baron, Savage, IP Mascarena, Promethean Princess in the Graveyard, Flamberge, Float for infinite follow-up and probably has a bunch of hand traps to boot. There was simply no realistic way to break that board and actually win the game. Because maybe you can break the board, but then you can't combo yourself because there's a hand trap. Or you can break the board, but you can't quite OTK and then their follow-up is insane because they literally have like seven cards in hand. That was simply not possible. The only possible solution that people had is to just throw hand traps at the opponent, right? That's why people played Imperm, Ash, Valor, Nibiru. Some people played Mourner, you had Droll, and some more niche ones. But like you would be playing upwards of 15 hand traps in this format to deal with what everyone is doing because like you can't actually let them play the game, right? And so what I'm hoping for with this ban list is that that doesn't become what you have to do, right? And that doesn't mean that hand traps are going to be bad. I want to emphasize on this. It just means you are not forced. It is not the only way to play the game but you can still and you still will sometimes you know there's always going to be certain hand traps that are going to be fine right this whole concept of you can play a couple hand traps in your deck just because they're solid but they're not actually required i think that concept is going to return and i think that's a good sign there's been a long time where you would see decks play like only ash and imperm because they were solid pieces of interaction it wasn't required to draw three hand traps to stop your opponent from playing the game it was like okay if i have an imperm on a solid 
solid choke point. They're still going to play a little bit, make a board, but I can probably deal with that. Those were fine. And I think that's the situation that we're going to approach. I think all these cards still have their merits. They don't lose their appeal, you know, because sometimes certain matchups you really want a certain hat trap against to stop one particular thing, right? Because all of these cards over here, or like not all of these, but most of these don't stop a gimmick puppet nightmare, for example, right? I think we're going to head into a direction where you can feasibly play like Talon's Imperm Ash in your deck again, and that's going to be a real strategy. You know, you don't have to play 15 hand traps to even compete because if you go second, you have to stop your opponent from playing the game at any cost. At the same time, you don't have to full commit into 20 board breakers if you want to do it right. The reason why you had to full commit into hand traps or board breakers is because you always needed to draw a lot of these cards to do what you wanted to do. If you went second, with one hand trap and one board breaker, that was not enough in the current format. Snake Eye would most likely still combo you, and then the one board breaker wouldn't help you either. I think going forward, something like that could be the case, right? You could very well open like a Talents and an Imperm and be okay going second into Snake Eyes. Maybe you Imperm the Ponics to make sure they don't get the Fire King engine going, and then you use a Talents to deal with their Appalooza or whatever, right? And then you're good. You still have four cards left, and you're actually going to play a good and interactive game and that is a much more feasible option when the deck wouldn't have ended on baron and savage if you hadn't thrown three hand traps at it right they dodge my imperm and still combo me yeah maybe they have a kirin and that's why you don't play imperm but you're not forced to that's the beautiful thing you don't have to play imperm and valor if you want to make sure that you don't get dodged by kirin or anything like that right you don't have to before this ban list you are forced to play the hand traps because if you don't stop pure snake eye you pretty much never win and that's the good thing. That's what I'm trying to get across, right? These cards are not worthless. They are still good. They still have applications. And that goes for all the other hand traps as well, right? It's more feasible to play a game where you don't draw three board breakers or three hand traps. And that means you have more room to play decks that mostly function with engine. You have more room to play the best ones out of both categories because when what happens when you have to play 18 hand traps is at some point the quality of the hand trap goes down not every hand trap is like imperm or ash everyone struggled with this in the past format you're like okay i'll play that hand trap i'll play that hand trap that isn't enough i need more but they get less and less powerful the more you have to put in and the same is true for board breakers not every board breaker is good as good as talents or thrust and so you get to play higher quality cards because you're not forced into one category of cards and you get to play the cards that you think are good in the format right because right now there's not that much room for innovation there's not that much room to change the way things are going because literally what are you going to do if 15 hand traps are mandatory maybe you make one decision of like do i think mourner is better than droll that's it you don't get to choose from all these cards on the table because they don't go together in the current format but they will go together again moving forward you know you can realistically i think go back to something like uh playing a couple hand traps that you think are good on certain choke points and you get to play certain board breakers that you think are good against certain decks and that's exciting some players are still going to play full board breakers some players are still going to play full hand traps some players are going to play a mix i think all of those things could be valid but i think the fact that there is no clear best option between those is a good thing that is the main benefit of this ban list as to what i would do without omni gates i find board breakers to be more promising and more reliable for a couple of different reasons board breakers can usually not be dodged like hand traps can if they have a called by the grave or if they have a fire king kirin in hand to dodge your effect veil or imperm or whatever i think it's less risky in a way to rely on certain board breakers you don't run into talents if you play board breakers obviously vice versa if you play board breakers those are worse going first but i tend to enjoy that more anyways i think another big category of cards that are going to be huge going forward is cards that instead of stopping your opponent from playing they just give you more cards yourself are cards like phantasme cards like impulse and fire attacker cards like magical spring specifically for fire king snake eye i think these kind of cards are gonna be way more interesting now depending on how exactly you build your deck mostly in decks that play a decent amount of board breakers i think these cards are way more viable right now because obviously at the moment you wouldn't play these cards really because they just don't have great synergy and they don't stop your opponent from playing the game when you're on a deck with 15 hand traps you would rather have your hand trap stop your opponent but yeah this sort of stuff is definitely a huge winner in my book 
for the upcoming format. And then obviously you have Shifter, which is going to remain as powerful as ever. Nothing really changes for Shifter. Another engine that I think you're going to see a lot, and this is not going to be a surprise to anyone, I think this engine is going to be very, very strong. I already said before that I don't believe in pure Sky Striker at the moment, but I think if you are going to play a deck that focuses heavily on board breakers, I think these cards are phenomenal. Triple Thrust and Triple Engage, you have so much gas and so many opportunities to get multiple engages off. I feel like this is actually a real strategy to be messed with. Without Link Karibo, isn't the Striker engine bad? That is a good point. Link Karibo was a big deal for the Striker package because one way of using these cards was you would make a Link Karibo with the token because it's level one. And then you would link off the Link Karibo to make it so that you could dodge Imperm or Veiler. The thing is, if Imperm and Veiler become less popular, then that also becomes less of an issue. If everyone still plays Imperm and Veiler, then yes, that is a downside. But yeah, I think Striker Engine is a huge factor for board breaker decks that you might want to consider. It makes Dark, it makes Hita, it draws cards. Widow Anchor is great. Shark Cannon is phenomenal against Fire King Snake Eye. You can out the Garunix, you can out the Promethean Princess, whatever you want. Like, it's so strong. I think this engine is going to be played at some point. And then the last thing I wanted to bring up is that I think Bestials are going to go nowhere. I think Bestials are one of the more more powerful hand traps moving forward simply because they have a lot of implications against a lot of top decks i think it's not that unlikely that pure snake eyes is gonna still be a thing where your game plan with pure snake eyes basically remains unchanged you'd still go and play a bunch of non-engine rely on one to two card combos to get you to a solid board your solid board is going to be less solid than before it's not going to be unbreakable because it doesn't have baron and savage you're just going to go for like link good stuff basically you're going to make like apo ip mascarena promethean in the graveyard back it up with a couple of hand traps that is still good but i think bestials taking away the ip mascarena from that setup is incredibly strong because without Baron or Savage, there's no real way around that. At that point, you only maybe have to deal with like an Apo plus a Promethean and that's probably doable. They also cover Branded and uh, Voiceless Voice really well. Those are like some of the top decks in the format right now, like some of the most expected decks in the game. I think Bestials have great potential. Side deck for sure. I could even see main decking Bestials in, in certain decks, depends. We're not going to talk about every single hand trap because like i said before evaluating the quality of a certain hand trap in the upcoming format depends so much on how exactly people approach deck building i feel like we've talked enough about what could happen in terms of like the philosophy behind playing Yu-Gi-Oh in the upcoming year or upcoming format. Hand traps in general are going to be less important. That doesn't mean they're going to be bad. All that does, it enables a decision during deck building again of do I want to play hand traps? Do I not want to play hand traps? Do I want to play board breakers? Do I not want to play board breakers? And it also, most importantly, it enables decks in the game again that don't have 15 non-engine slots. And so that is going to be back on the menu. Individual hand traps, I think, are going to return to this position that they were in for a majority of the game's lifespan, where I don't think they're mandatory moving forward. I think there is alternatives. I think it's now possible to break certain boards again with engine and maybe the help of like some board breakers. And I think that's a good thing. That doesn't mean you can't play hand traps. That doesn't mean a card like DD Crow can't be incredibly good against certain matchups. That doesn't mean even more situational hand traps, like maybe a ghost ogre or whatever, can't go back into the format. They absolutely can. It is not the time, I think, right now for me to predict exactly which of these cards is going to be the best one or which ones you should absolutely play. We might do that at some point down the line, but I also need some time to learn what the format is going to be like. I think Baron de Fleur is such a fundamental change change to how the game is going to be played that it's just hard to predict but i hope you enjoyed this discussion i'm pretty sure this is going to make it to youtube so if you've been watching this on youtube uh let me know what you think are you going to play hand traps are you going to play board breakers are you going to play a mix of both are you going to play a deck that doesn't need either or doesn't have room for either hope you enjoyed the discussion make sure to like comment and subscribe and have a wonderful rest of your day bye bye everybody